Okay, so hello everyone. Um, you're going to have to excuse me a little bit if I sound a little bit nasally. I'm going through a little bit of allergy. So if I start going to a bit of a coughing or sneezing fit, please just pause the film a bit. Okay. All right. So uh, a few weeks ago, I get a text message. Please call me when you have a moment. That's quite often what I get from Winston. So I call him up. Hey, you, what's up? I don't know what the hell is wrong with her. She chewed up another baseboard. I'm tired of this. I let her mess up her bed. I give her treats. I give her this. I give her that. And she still does this crap. What the hell is wrong with her? He's referring to his dog, Kismet. And um, as I'm listening to him rage about what she's done, she chewed up a little bit of baseboard. You have to understand that like, a, a few days before that, she ripped up her bed. If you go to her Instagram site, you'll see like foam stuff everywhere. It's her own bed. I said, it's her own bed. It's not a big deal. Anyway, I, I can sense the anger, the frustration, and the huge negative energy as he's telling me this, literally shouting this over the phone, as he's just fed up with this behavior of hers. Kismet is not even nine months old yet. Um, she's a beautiful dog, but she is a puppy. She hasn't done this before. She's starting to behave in ways he doesn't understand. And all I'm thinking to myself is, she's a dog, something's bothering her, and she can't tell you. I'm tired of this game. I'm tired of restuffing her bed. I don't really care anymore. I'm going to take it, throw it in a bag, and throw it out. She can sleep on the floor for all I care. I am done with this BS behavior. And that's going to make it all better. My mom, if you talk to her, she would tell you that when Winston was younger, he was a really good boy. He was quiet, you know, respectful, always ate his dinner, was, you know, really good with the elders, stuff like that. Uh, model, model son. And then something started to change. He just started to behave in ways that he didn't do before. Was it, you know, a new group of friends? Was it a change in school? Was it something happening at school? What was going on? Um, I'm not sure if Winston would even admit to this to anybody, but I can tell you, honestly, growing up with him, that he put my parents through quite a lot. And, uh, sorry, I was referring to my notes here a little bit. Um, and in, in all honesty, considering what he put my parents through, chewing on baseboards was, is, is really nothing. If that's all he ended up doing, was he was chewing on baseboards, that'd be actually fantastic. My parents didn't really know what to do. They tried to talk to him. And this is what the response was. They tried to talk to him some more. They would ask more questions, and all he would do is stand there. No response and wouldn't look at them. It's awfully frustrating. Awfully frustrating. And you can sense it. And they got more and more angry. And more frustration led to more anger. More anger ended up leading to a spanking, probably, which led to more fear. And you would think that things would possibly change, but they didn't. Well, actually, they kind of did. They got worse. I remember my son. Uh, I have two boys. I have a 13-year-old and a 15-year-old. And my older son, um, he started behaving similarly. I remember getting mad at him for something. And all he would do, he just, and I'm like, wow, this feels really familiar. And we just kind of ignored it or whatever. And then one day, I was in the car. My, you know, we're, the four of us were driving to some family activity. And I don't know what Sean was up to. Or all I know is that he 
Jamie just started screaming. We have a minivan and there's like a seat here and a seat here and there's a gap in between. That must have been a parent input because that whole bucket seat thing, having three kids sit side by side, not a cool thing. But still, they're able to reach over and I don't know what he did. He must have hit him, pinched him, I don't know. But he just started making Jamie cry. And I turned around and I said, what, why did you choose to hurt your brother? That's all I asked. Why did you choose to hurt your brother? And this is what I, Sean, why did you choose to hurt your brother? I turn around. Buddy, look at me, please. Look at me. At this point, this has been going on for quite a while. My husband got a little bit fr flush, yeah, frustrated with this. And he just goes, Answer your mother! <laughs> Mike, stop the car for a sec, please. He pulls, out, pulls over. I get out of the car. Open side door. You know what, sweetie? I remember when Uncle Winston was young, and he used to do the same thing to Gong Gong Popo when he thought he was in trouble. He wouldn't respond to them, and it was like talking to a stone wall. It was awfully frustrating, and they got really, really angry. I will not let you do that to me. You have choice. And I will give you this choice. You have a choice to talk or not to talk. And that's fine. But I have a choice as well. And my choice is we aren't going anywhere until you say something. You don't have to be scared to tell me anything. I don't want you to be scared. And it doesn't matter what it is. Because at the end of the day, I'll just be happy that you talk to me. So we sat there for a while. And this is all it was. And then I heard, Mommy, Jamie was just really bugging me. Oops. Thank you for talking to me, baby. We'll figure it out. And we went on. Probably the best thing I ever did before having children was adopting a dog. My dog, Casey, our first dog, taught me a lot about patience and persistence and consistency. Um, excuse me. I have to say, and I'm probably going to get some flack from this, because I know I have in the past, Raising a young child is a lot like training a puppy. It really is, right? Keep it simple. When the kids, and I, like, I, I'd go shopping, you know, it's hot in the day. I didn't want the kids to go in the car because it's too hot while I'm putting the groceries in the car. So I say, okay, boys, sit, stay. I'll be back. You know, I carry cookies in my pocket, you know, retreats, right? Doggy bags as well. They were young, <laughs> had moments. Um, the second best thing that happened to me after I became a parent was meeting our daycare lady, Antoinette. And she taught me probably the most important thing ever, not just as being a parent, but as being a person. She says, never, ever, ever ask your child if he has been a good boy. Okay? Ask them, have you had a good day? It's really important to separate out the behavior from the person. Because at some point, by telling somebody they've been bad, they've been bad, they've been bad, they will hear it enough that they're gonna believe it. And they're gonna feel that I've been bad. I guess this is how bad people behave, so I guess this is what I'm supposed to behave like. And not really understanding that actually 
it's your behavior that is not so good. Sorry. And she knows she did something wrong. She's right there. She's behind, hiding behind the couch right now. Her tail's between her legs, and she won't even look at me. She's scared. She's scared of you right now. She is so scared, she doesn't even want to look at you. She knows you're mad. She has no idea why you're mad, but she just knows you're mad, and you're possibly mad at her, and she is frightened. Kismet should never be scared of you. You need to get down to her level, call her over, give her a choice. And when she chooses to come, you hold her and you cuddle her and you let her know that no matter how mad, how frustrated and how upset you are, that you still love her. Train her with love, not fear. Praise will get you far more better results than punishment ever will. So the next day, he okay, just worried that Winston was going to punt his dog out the door. I called him up and I said, oh, hey, buddy, I just want to call and see how things are going. And uh, he said, he told me, you know what, you know what, I totally get it. She's young, uh, lots of changes going on right now. I decided to make, put things back to where they were used to be. You know, we put the bed aside for a while um, and I put some towels down. Now you see, Kismet is kind of an interesting dog. I don't know what is about her. Like, there's nice plush cushions and dog beds and stuff like that, but she prefers to lie on towels. So, you know, he'd put a towel by the door, towel by the fireplace, towel, towel in the kitchen. He took a towel. He put it by his workbench. That's the one she chose to lie on. Thank you very much.